Greetings, you mighty earth-shaking, history-making champions. I'm Pastor Glenn Curry, and yowza, I'm excited to share the mighty Word of God with you. I know God's Word is designed to build you up and give you your inheritance, praise God. To me, one of the greatest examples of the power of a decision and perseverance is found in the life of Abraham Lincoln, believe it or not. We know him today as the man who basically saved our union, but for 28 years, Lincoln knew nothing but defeat, disappointment, heartbreak, and discouragement. Most people don't know that. In 1832, as a young man, Lincoln had a partner in a store they had together. But the shady dealings of his partner soon forced the store into bankruptcy. Man, I hate when that happens. In, in 1833, he decided to try his hand in another business and failed. This time, his partner was an alcoholic who soon died and saddled Lincoln with all the debts. When the Bible tells you to not be unequally yoked with unbelievers, that's not just in marriage. That's in business, too. But anyway, so Lincoln decided to take a job as a surveyor, okay? but his creditors eventually took his instruments and his horse <laughs> and forced him to lose his employment. It would take him another 15 years to pay off that debt. Shortly after Lincoln was elected as a legislature in 1839, his sweetheart died. He had a nervous breakdown. Afterwards, he became suicidal. He had to return home to his parents after he was an adult. His condition was so bad that his friends and parents hid all the knives in the house and the scissors from him because they thought he was going to cut his wrist or cut his carotid artery or something like that. In 1836, in an attempt to rebuild his life, and you can rebuild your life no matter what's happened to you, he decided to run for Speaker of the House. You know what happened to him? He lost. In 1843, he decided to get nominated, try to get nominated to Congress. He was soundly defeated. Why doesn't this guy just give up? When he finally made it to Congress in 1846, his constituents only elected him for, for two years and wouldn't re-elect him. Wow. And so in 18, I think 56, he lost the nomination for vice president. And in 1858, he tried for Senate again, but was dis crushed by a guy named Douglas. Everything went wrong for Abraham Lincoln. And at this point, even before, you might think this dude should have thrown, thrown in the towel. Most everything he decided to try didn't work out, but Abraham Lincoln persevered. And that's what I want you to do. Make a decision and persevere. Stick with it. In 1860, he won the presidency of the United States, only to face the greatest challenge, you might say, in American history. It was the split of the Union, the Civil War. Lincoln's great power came primarily from his decision not to quit. Remember I told you, winners never quit. Quitters never win. It's always too soon to quit. Five more minutes and you might get it. Okay, if you tried to live your dream and failed even a few times, remember Abraham Lincoln and remember that winners never quit, quitters never win. Amen. I want to paraphrase for you. First Samuel uh, 13, I think it's the Philistines were gathered together to fight against Israel. And it says there was like 30,000 chariots and 6,000 horsemen. And the people were so many that the Bible says they were like the sand by the seashore in multitude. And so when the men of Israel saw, they were outnumbered, I'm gonna say 100 to one, I don't know what it was. They were distressed. They, the, the people of God hid themselves in caves and in thickets and in rocks and in the high places, in the hills and pits. They, were, they weren't living the abundant life that Jesus came to give us. They were bummed out. After several days, 
Samuel didn't show up. He was going to come offer a sacrifice, and everybody thought that when the sacrifice is offered and we're perfectly cleansed by blood and we're right with God because of the blood sacrifice, God's going to help us here. So after Samuel didn't show up, Saul offered the sacrifice. He stepped out of his priestly anointing and calling and moved into another calling. And so that's a dangerous thing for you. If you're called to be an usher or a children's worker, you be the best you possibly can. And if you want something else, let God promote you. But Saul stepped out of his office as king and stepped into the priest's office, which he shouldn't have done. And as soon as he offered that sacrifice, Samuel shows up. Duh, right. And Samuel said, what have you done? Saul said, why did you do this, dude? You're not a priest. I was coming to do this. I don't know what he said. But Saul said, because I saw that the people were scattered away from me, they were hiding like a bunch of frady cats, and, and I didn't even know how to get them, and you didn't show up here for the days that I thought, day you were gonna, I thought you were going to come, and the Philistines came down upon me from Gilgal. I forced myself to offer the burnt offering, the sacrifice. Not that I disobeyed God or not that I stepped out of my office to do something else. Uh, I forced myself. I didn't want to do it. And Samuel said to Saul, you have done foolishly. You've not kept the commandments of the Lord. He commanded you that you're the king. I'm the priest. I'm the prophet. I'm going to offer the sacrifice. So the Lord would have established your kingdom forever if you had just obeyed him, just stayed in faith, kept the switch of faith turned on. But now your kingdom shall not continue. Wow. The Lord has sought another man, and we know him to be David, a man after his own heart, and the Lord has commanded him to be king instead of you. That's pretty amazing that he lost his kingship all the fame, all the money, all the glory, all the honor, because he just did something stupid. Don't do stupid things in your life. Do the right thing, because it's the right thing to do, not because you feel like it, okay? Samuel told him, because you have not kept that which the Lord commanded you, because you've rejected the word of the Lord, God has rejected you from being king. Wow. Saul's decision cost him the kingdom and his offspring the kingdom. He forfeited his, forfeited his right to rule as king because he decided to disobey God. He stepped out of his office as the king. That's how I see it, into the office of the priest. And so what I want you to know is that very capable people going through life a lot of times don't ever, don't experience their dreams, their desires. You know, old people a lot of times say, say you hear them say, maybe your parents have told you, I didn't think things were, would turn out like this. Well, they didn't follow their dream. You're protected as you walk with God and follow what's in your heart. People don't buy their dream homes or travel or take the great vacations or start the business because they think they have no resources, no money. I'm telling you that once you make the decision to do and have and be something, and I want you to be better uh, as a person every day than you were yesterday, and then tomorrow better than today. Keep, keep growing as a person because when you become more, you can do more, you can have more, you can help other people more, you can give more, you can love more, and you get in a cycle of blessing that every day you're becoming more as a man, more as a woman, more as a Christian, praise God. Anyway, thinking that you don't have the resources hold a lot of people back, but the truth is, once you make the decision, a way's gonna be shown to you to have what you desire. And so I'm telling you, don't quit. Don't back up in Jesus' name. What would have happened if you would have kept your New Year's resolution to yourself five, let's say four, three, two years ago? Where would you be today if you just kept the, kept the promise you made to yourself? I'm Pastor Glenn Curry. Keep watching 
and decide to feed your faith and starve your doubts. And please decide to like and subscribe and follow this program because we're going to build your faith and starve your doubts in Jesus' name. Have a great day.